What's going on guys and welcome back. In this video, I'm gonna show you guys how to fix your lock actuator for your W204 using a very simple fix. This involves buying an aftermarket universal lock actuator kit and it will allow you to still fix your lock actuator without having to go through all the trouble of removing your inner door panel, drilling out pop rivets and even removing your window so that you can get to your door handle, your lock actuator and remove it in order to replace it or fix it. This fix is so easy and so simple. I wanted to share this with you guys so that you too can save time and money. All that coming right up. So usually when it comes to fixing your lock actuator, it is a very involved task and it really does involve removing your door panel, drilling out about nine pop rivets, and then removing your door handle, unplugging a lot of different plugs, and then removing some screws, some bolts, just so that you can remove the lock actuator and replace it or fix it. Depending on how you choose to fix it will also dictate how you're going to fix it. So if you just want to replace the actuator motor itself, then you know you can do that. But a lot of people tend to just buy a secondhand part or a brand new part. And that can set you back anywhere from $80 secondhand to like $160 brand new. However, I have found a lock actuator from China for about $122 brand new. It is definitely the part that you would use in order to fix your lock actuator so I'll be sure to leave links in the description below just to give you guys an idea of how much it costs and um, what's involved when it comes to having to replace your lock actuator so the purpose of this video is to show you guys how you can use a universal lock actuator part with only two wires and hardwire it to your door module so that when you unlock and lock the car using either your remote control or the buttons inside your car it will still work as it should this is a common fault and if you are a mercedes-benz owner i'm sure you would have experienced this before and if you're lucky not to then I'm sure eventually this will become a problem as it is a common fault. And this common fault is where when you go to unlock your car, the lock either bounces or it doesn't lock and unlock as it should. This is due to the lock actuator malfunctioning. So in this video, I'm going to show you guys how you can wire this aftermarket universal lock actuator and install it in your door frame so that it will save you both time and money this is a very simple fix guys anybody can do this and i'm going to show you guys exactly how to do that so let's jump into the video now it is my front left passenger side door that is broken or the lock actuator has malfunctioned okay so we'll unlock it as you can see it does not unlock or we'll lock it it doesn't even budge okay so that is what we are going to be fixing today this is going to be the same for every other door, except for the driver's side, because that is going to be your master lock actuator. Ensure that you do choose the slave lock actuator, because the slave lock actuator is every other door apart from your main door, which is your driver door. And this is the lock actuator that I'm talking about right here. It is a universal one. Now, I purchased this locally, so I will leave a link in the description where you can get these from eBay. And they are basically exactly the same as uh, this lock actuator itself. Rest assured that you can buy these, whether you're in America, Australia. And if you're in Australia, this I bought from JCar, and it is only $13. However, on eBay, you can buy up to two of them for $16. I paid $13 for this single lock actuator. And I have to tell you guys, it has made life so much easier. Okay, so in order to start off, you need to remove your entire door panel and get to the inside of your door. I'll leave a link in the top right hand corner right now because I've already done a video showing you how to remove this door panel. We won't get into that. Be sure to watch that video so that you can see for yourself how to remove this door panel. And then we will take it from there. This is basically what we are going to do. We are going to be using the aftermarket lock actuator and we're going to be installing it in this part right here. Now the reason why we installed it here is because we have in our door panel a spot that will fit that actuator perfectly. And that's why it's important that you measure correctly where this actuator will sit so that 
when you install it it will not protrude in any way and it will sit perfectly in this compartment right here therefore allowing you to lock and unlock the door this is a very simple modification and it's going to save you a ton of money and even save you a lot of hassle as well because if you haven't seen it yet in order to replace the door actuator in here you have to remove nine pop rivets all around the door and then remove your door handle your lock all that stuff and then you have to remove it from the actual door panel itself and even remove the window just to get to that lock actuator so therefore I decided to go with an aftermarket part and it does exactly the same thing this is a $13 part on its own and all you have to do is a simple modification like this cut some factory wires and then you will be able to fix your lock actuator without having to spend over a hundred dollars and go through all the trouble of removing your inner door panel just to get to the lock actuator to show you how this works according to the schematics of the car these wires here is what controls your lock actuator it sends a signal in and then it sends a signal out in our case we have to cut cables because we no longer want to send power to our factory lock actuator and we only want to send power to this lock actuator another good thing is that this lock actuator only uses two cables and then it reverses the polarity once you lock and unlock the car so therefore according to the schematics of the car the two cables you're going to need is the gray with a blue stripe and the gray with a black stripe and that's it your blue will go to the gray with the blue stripe and your green will go to the gray with the black stripe and that's it it is as simple as that use these two cables only and then you want to mount it here this is what's going to allow you to use the locking pin and then allow you to mount it to your current locker lever therefore it will lock and unlock as it's supposed to if you really want to just fix your your lock actuator in the easiest way possible this is the best way to do it now as you can see here i drew two black marks where i wanted my lock actuator head to sit just to show you guys how i mounted the bracket this is what i did i used this plastic rivet point as a reference okay and as you can see here i've got 50 mil in to the right from this hole and then 80 mil up so if you if you take a look 80 mil up is where the top of my actuator is going to sit and that is in the unlock position all right and then when i measure across it is 50 mil across to where roughly this pin sits which is the end of your lock actuator now look <laughs> Your measurements aren't going to be exactly the same. It just all depends on how you mount it and what you use and how you want to mount it. You know, some people might want to mount it a bit more of an angle. It's totally up to you, but this worked for me. Everyone's going to have different ways of doing things. This is just my way, but I'm just going to give you a rough idea of how far in you put the actuator and how far in you want to drill your holes for your actuator mounting bracket. As for the mounting bracket holes, as you can see here if we line it off with it it is basically 90 mil up we want to go to the center of it so that's 90 mil up and then across you want approximately 70 mil as you can see here 70 mil is here and that's basically lines up with your mounting hole as for the bottom mounting bracket it is 95 mil millimeters down and then 150 in and that's how you get your mounting holes another thing is when it comes to mounting your bracket if you take a look at what I've done here as you can see here the bottom mounting bracket there is a curve here it does not sit completely flush so what I did was I lined up my bracket and then where the curve was I marked a line right there where the curve in the door panel is so that I could bend it there and then I simply bent it back out and made sure that I could get a rivet in here. And that's it. That's how simple that was. It's, it's really not hard to do. You can do it with a pair of pliers and it's really easy to do. 
all I did was I bent this part here. This part didn't line up flush, but when I put my rivet in, I made sure I pushed it in all the way. And once I popped it in, as you can see, it helped bend it anyway. Just get it roughly to where you want it. And once you go to pop rivet it in, it will line up and it will bend for you anyway but you have to get it as close to the door panel as possible. That way it actually takes hold and it grips so that uh, your mounting bracket is uh, flush with the door panel. As for how your lock actuator is going to mount, I'm just going to take it apart slowly now so that you guys can see exactly how this is all mounted together. All right, basically there are three screws in here which will allow you to connect your aftermarket a lock pin to your factory lock pin okay and that simply just screws in via this clamp that way it clamps onto your aftermarket lock pin and then it allows you to clamp it onto your factory lock pin so I'll just remove these three screws here and show you guys how you get it in position it's going to be different for everybody like I say you know everyone has their own ways of doing things but I'm going to show you how I did it just to give you an idea of uh, what to expect. Okay, so as you can see here, this is how the lock actuator comes together. I bent my pin like this so that I could get it as close to the door panel as possible. You don't want it sticking out too much because it will interfere with how the lock uh, functions. What you do here is you grab this rod, you stick it through your lock actuator, and then there is a flat piece on the end that then holds it in place you then bend it as close to the door panel as possible and from there you get your fastener and then you secure this to your uh, locking pin first and then from there you connect it to your factory locking pin that way when you lock and unlock the actuator it will grip onto your factory lock locking pin and lock it and unlock it as you lock and unlock the car you need to put through your aftermarket locking pin first so we put it through the single hole like so after we've bent it to where we want it we then have a screw that tightens what i like to do is secure the fastener to the aftermarket locking pin first and then secure it to the factory locking pin okay and also in order to get it to your locking pin you're going to need to cut open this rubber grommet so that you can get it in here that way you're not securing it up here and you don't have a fastener bulging out therefore protruding and not allowing your door to sit flush with your door panel you make a little slit here do not remove it completely because you do need this rubber grommet get our fastener in there this is where you tighten your screws so that it will grip onto your factory locking pin you want to make sure you really get it on there guys if you do not tighten it properly it will just slide up and down because it will not grip on alrighties there we go with this extra bit here you could choose to cut it off or you could leave it you know the choice is yours now for how to connect the power all you have are two cables it's very simple you have four wires here that go to and from your lock actuator and then that then goes to this green plug right here i've cut the two wires that i'm going to connect onto the lock actuator at this point here so that i could just tape it here what you need to use for your green cable off your aftermarket action lock actuator is you need to connect it to your gray wire with a black stripe your blue wire connects to the gray wire with a blue stripe very simple blue goes to a blue stripe green goes to a black stripe and that's it that's how simple it is to wire this up just two wires and it's so simple i'm going to plug it back in right here okay and i'm going to show you guys how it all works moment of truth you press lock it's already locked now we press unlock look at that look how good is that guys it locks and unlocks as it should so you know this is definitely an aftermarket mod worth doing because from research I have seen that to buy a brand new lock actuator for your W204 it can cost you a hundred and thirty dollars and that's from China Okay, that's an aftermarket part from China, not an OEM or genuine Mercedes part. $130 compared to this $13 
aftermarket universal lock actuator. I mean, you weigh it out. The only difference is that you install it in the door panel here rather than inside. But the best part about all of this is that you don't have to remove all these rivets and get to the inner door panel to remove your factory lock actuator and replace it. So I highly recommend to do an aftermarket modification like this in order to save you time, money, and even the hassle of having to do so much work to replace a simple malfunction. Another thing I needed to show you guys is that when I went to install my door panel, I noticed that this part here where the lock rod comes up and lines up with the um, the door lock, it rubs against this plastic part here. So therefore, due to friction being the problem, it doesn't lock and unlock as it should. So what I had to do was get out a grinder and I just grind off about two to three mil the, off this little section right here, as you can see. I've grinded it all off and the aftermarket locking pin now sits at this point here. It sits flush and it locks and unlocks as it should. So that's the last thing you'd have to do in order to get this lock actuated to work. Now I'm going to finish it all off, wrap it in some tester tape, put some heat shrink over the exposed wires and um, fix it all up, put the door panel back on and uh, we'll test it again to make sure that everything works the way it should. Okay, so that's what the finished product looks like. I've wrapped everything in tester tape and now it looks factory as it should. Now we're going to put the door panel back on. Be sure that you test everything once again before you start to put everything back together. You need to make sure everything works. So make sure you test fit it, put the door panel back on, test it, make sure it still unlocks and locks when you put the door panel on for the trial fitting. And if it does, then you're good to go and you can put everything back together. Okay guys, final test, everything's put back together. Now we need to test, make sure it's all good before we can put the last two T30 Torx screws under there. You do need to make sure that you do trial test it with the door on. And that way you can take care of any friction points where the lock pin is rubbing against the inner door frame. Doing that will cause the lock not to unlock all the way nor lock all the way. In this case, everything seems to be working just great. Lock, unlock, lock, unlock. We'll give it a try with the door closed. Lock, try the door handle. There we go. Unlock, beautiful. Now, all the doors are working again. And we have fixed this problem with a $13 universal lock actuator. That brings us to the end of the video. So if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. And as always, don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell in order to keep up with the uploads. And also be sure to stay tuned for the next video where I show you guys how to upgrade your AC control unit to the E-Class W212 climate control unit. It just looks so much nicer. It is a little bit involved, but you know, it really is well worth it. So be sure to stay tuned for the next video where I show you guys exactly how to install what you need to do in order to get the E-Class W212 climate control. There are some pros and cons to this. I'll talk about that in that video. So until next time, guys, thanks for watching. This is Mike with Mikey's Vlogs, signing off.